Human beings are not particularly fast relative to other species. We're not particularly strong relative to other species. You might say, well, how do we make it in life? You know, how do we make it from an evolutionary perspective? And I think there's no doubt that one of the ways, one of the reasons we have survived as long as we have is an appreciation of doing things together, a capacity for the community to do something. And of course, that's deeply connected. That's why I really appreciate Dan's framing. It's deeply committed first to our innate capacity to care. You really don't have to teach a little kid to be concerned about another. Now, of course, we can lose that and then some teaching could help us regain it. But I can remember when our oldest son was six, he came home one day, he was really concerned because another boy in his school couldn't go to recess. And he said, you know, Jimmy can't go to recess. He said, well, why can't Jimmy go to recess? Teacher won't let him go to recess. Why won't the teacher let him go to recess? Well, the teacher won't let him go to recess because he makes so much commotion in the class and he's very disruptive. So the teacher said you can't go to recess. And Nate understood very well if anybody needed recess, it was Jimmy. And it concerned him enormously that Jimmy couldn't go to recess. So we don't really have to teach kids to care. There is something innate, and gradually, even through fairly recent research, we're starting to discover, even with very young children, there is this innate tendency to care. That tendency to care is a foundation for this awakening I was describing of appreciating the whole and how my actions can either be contributing to the whole or not. So that to me is kind of the root awareness. Um, the other term that gets woven in here is the term thinking, systems thinking. Um, and I think that all real thinking to take root must have a place to take root in. So it's based in, in many ways, or it's, it takes a home in us in many ways, because there's certain cognitive abilities that are anchored in a broader and deeper awareness that awareness of caring, and then of course that awareness that you know my actions really matter, that awareness of self. So when you take that to a yet another level, it starts to be, well, how is this class working? How could I contribute to the class working? How does my school work? And, and what does that matter to me and how do I contribute? Usually in that progression, at some point we all, kids included, kind of slip off the edge. And where we slip off the edge is we can no longer see a connection between my action and the consequence. In a sense, all ethical behavior. There's a lot of concern and a lot of really good work going on today in the uh, social emotional learning field around ethics and ethical behavior. But in some very, very fundamental sense, ethics is based on awareness. If I cannot see the consequence of my action, there really is not an option to act in a different way that might be more, in fact, f effective or beneficial for another. So ethics is a function of awareness. And at some point, usually, as the system gets bigger and bigger, as the circle of interdependence gets bigger and bigger, we no longer can see the consequence. 